Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain you about how does web work. All the systems that are connected to the web are called as clients and servers. In simple terms, a client is a system which is going to send a request to the server and the server is a system which is going to process that request and send a reply back to the client in the form of a response. Clients are the typical web users, internet connected devices, for example, the computer that is connected to the Wi-Fi or a phone which is connected to the mobile network and web accessing software available on these devices, which are typically called as your web browsers. For example, it could be Firefox or Chrome. The servers are the computers that store web pages, sites or applications. When a client device wants to access a web page, a copy of the web page is downloaded from the server onto the client machine to be displayed in the user's browser. What is a web server? In short, a web server can refer to a hardware or software or both of them which are working together. On the hardware side, a web server is basically a computer that stores a website's component files, for example, HTML documents, images, CSS style sheets, and JavaScript files, and delivers them to the end user's device. It is connected to the internet and can be accessed through a domain name, for example, google.com. How does the client communicate with the server? In order for the client to communicate with the server, it needs to know the unique address of the server. The address is called as Internet Protocol Address, or in short, it's called as IP address. How do I determine my IP address? Is by going to the command prompt and type in the command as ipconfig. So that should give you the IP address. So this is my local system's IP address. Similarly, a server is also assigned a IP address. The IP address is typically four, uh, divided into four parts, each separated by a dot. When the client wants to communicate with the server, the client needs to know this IP address of the server. What is the issue or what are the challenges for the client in communicating to the server using these numbers? The IP addresses are dynamic. So they keep changing after every hour or after every week or after every day. Moreover, there are over a million IP addresses. So the client has to keep the detail about all the million IP addresses and their corresponding servers. Along with that, it also needs to update every time there is a change in this IP address. In order to resolve this problem, the web has come up with a solution called as DNS or domain name service. What is a domain name server and how does it help you uh, overcome this issue? You don't have to remember the IP addresses anymore. Rather, you can remember or uh, all that you have to note is a unique string representation of a particular server. For example, here in my browser, I have google.com open. So this google.com is a domain name of uh, the Google's IP, uh, the Google servers. So here, when I want to access google.com, I don't have to know the IP address for Google. Rather, the only thing that I need to remember is this name called www.google.com. What happens in the backend? As soon as I hit enter in my browser, the request is going to go to one of my DNS servers which is either in my local computer or it could be in my immediate internet service provider or it could be in the uh, ISPs, ISP and, uh, ISP and so on. So this request is going to be resolved by one of the DNS servers sitting over, in the, over there in the web and that is going to return my computer a unique IP address like the one I showed you before. Now my client knows the IP address of the server for the Google. So this is going to take that IP address and talk to the Google server and request for its home page. And once the home page is downloaded on my local computer, it is displayed in my browser like the one that you see here. Now, let us try to understand what is the string representation. This string is called as URL or 
unique resource locator. The first part of this URL is a protocol. The protocol that you see here is HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. So this is a protocol which relies on a secure communication. The most frequently used protocol is HTTP, which is a non-secure form of the HTTPS. There are many other protocols. For example, we have something called as SNMP. We have something called as FTP, which is used for file transfer and so on. What is a protocol? A protocol is nothing but an agreement between two communicating parties. In simple terms, you might not understand if I speak in a different language apart from English. So here we have an agreement that the mode of communication is going to be English whenever we want to communicate. A protocol is a simple is also very similar. Two communicating parties have to agree upon a common form of exchange or a common form of or common mode of communication. The next text is called as www, which stands for World Wide Web. This part here is called as, uh, which is which is read as Google.com, is called as the domain name. So the Google server is identified by gogle.com. Now the .com of the domain name is called as extension. This extension could be .com, it could be .biz for businesses, it could be .edu for educational institutions, it could be country specific like .in for India, .cn for Canada, and .au for Australia, etc. In addition to this domain name, there could be an optional parameter which is called as the file name. For example, it could be something like tutorials.php. Now this path here indicates the file name that you want to access on the server. So here I'm trying to send the request to the google.com or the Google server, requesting it for a file called as tutorials.php. Upon receiving this request, the server is going to read that we have requested for a file called tutorials.php and the server is going to fetch one of those files, compile that into an equivalent HTML because the only language that is understandable by my client systems or my browsers is HTML or also called as hypertext markup language. Once my client receives the HTML, it passes through the HTML file and it displays a website or a application that looks very similar to this one. Let us take another example of a similar website of Google, which is called as YouTube.com. YouTube is one of the most famous uh, web applications over there on the internet, which hosts user-defined or user-uploaded uh, videos. So here, once I send a request, this domain name YouTube.com is going to be converted into an equivalent IP address by the system or by the DNS. And once my client is able to resolve that IP address, it is going to talk to my Google's youtube.com application and fetch its homepage, which looks similar to this one. So in short, this is the way web works or two different systems, which are clients and servers communicate over the internet. In the next video, I would explain you about how do you create a simple web application or a simple web page which looks similar to this one. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, we'll be discussing about an introduction to HTML.